When Boko sent out this phone to me, I had no idea what kind of phone I was going to get, other than the review invitation sent out to me first that says Fun Magician. However, Poco did share that this phone is a mid-range entertainment adventurer that brings all-round and immersive audio-visual fun, followed by two to three more marketing statements that don't really tell anything about the phone's real-world use. This is where the title comes in. So I've been using the Poco M5s for more than two weeks now. It's not as exciting as the Poco M5, the more expensive sibling of this phone with the newer MediaTek chip, but as of making of this video, I have no idea what the M5s price is going to be. I will be leaving the price in the description once it comes out, but using the M5s as my daily phone, I have some thoughts that might help me decide in purchasing this phone. So the M5s comes in just two colors, the standard black model and the blue one that I have here. As soon as I saw the back of this phone during unboxing, I immediately thought that this seemed like a familiar design. It took me a couple of days to realize that this M5s looks like the Redmi Note 10 Pro from last year, except smaller. But then again, Poco has ties with Xiaomi and Redmi, so despite Poco being an independent brand for a couple of years now, this Poco M5s is basically the Redmi Note 10s from the same year the Redmi Note 10 Pro launched, which in March of 2021. So if you're going to compare the spec sheet of this phone and the Redmi Note 10s, they're basically the same device. The only thing that's new here is that the M5s is now running on MIUI 13, that's based on Android 12. However, I feel like the version is not even the real version of this phone. I mean, it says MIUI 13 here, but the visual changes brought by the new version is nowhere to be found. For example, picture in picture mode is still squared instead of a rounded square. Another one is the light indicator at the corner when a camera or mic is being used. In fact, the M5s on first boot up was using the old notification center rather than the new one. Although you can change that in the settings, you just can't help but wonder if this is really MIUI 13. But nevertheless, the M5s, coupled with the oldie but still somewhat dependable Helio G95 with 6GB RAM, still runs just fine for browsing, watching, and some light gaming. This is still a 4G chipset, so you won't get the benefits of 5G nor the future proofing 5G provides. What I also realized is that with the games I've been playing right now, like Diablo Immortal and Nino Kuni, basically the new games today, the G95 is starting to struggle to render the graphics with consistent stutters. The good thing about the G95 though, after leaving Nino Kuni for 2 hours, is that it only got warm at best. It's actually weird that the F5S with the included 33W charger runs slightly warmer than playing a graphic intensive game, and that's with both the CPU and GPU at full throttle. Also, this has 120GB internal storage and a dedicated slot for a microSD expansion, which are still pretty neat. However, most of my time spent with this phone is staring at the screen. And yes, this 6.4 inches is actually AMOLED. It's bright enough to be visible in daylight thanks to the 450 nits typical brightness level, but it can even go up to 1100 nits in HDR. There are a couple of catches though. It's only 60Hz and HDR is not supported in Netflix. So with this 60Hz screen, I guess it's fine for those who really don't need the extra refresh rate, but for those who at least have some experience with at least 90Hz display on a phone, you'll definitely notice the difference. I immediately noticed the difference and yes, the Poco M5s felt slow, especially in games. So in general use, like switching apps or scrolling endlessly to feeds whom you don't even see anymore, the effect is less noticeable. I actually got used to it after a few days, but when I started playing Mobile Legends, that's where I felt like this screen is slow. To be more specific, the touch response is the one that felt slow to me, not the animation. It didn't hinder my competitiveness in-game, but I think I found myself adjusting to a slower response rate and it kinda affected the immersive part of the gaming experience. But yes, this display is still a decent display for a mobile phone, especially for someone who just wants to have a brighter and more colorful screen than a regular LCD. The only quirk I found here is that videos tend to look over sharpened and this has been one of the common things I've seen from budget mid-range MediaTek chipsets. For the cameras, they are okay. They are dependable when there's good lighting, like when shooting outdoors in the middle of the day, but once it gets challenging, the sensor struggles to find focus, resulting in blurry photos. So both the 64MP main sensor and the 8MP ultrawide can capture impressive looking photos in daylight. Although the colors need some boosting in post, it also means that the cameras lean toward a natural look. The same goes for the 13 megapixel selfie camera, and at night, you have to make sure you use night mode or else you will consistently get blurry shots no matter how stable your hands are. 
The one thing good about older chipsets like this Helio G95 compared to the newer ones is the availability of 4K video recording. I know that's not much when most people don't even realize they're shooting at 1080p by default, but now that you know, it's a really handy feature to have if you want the best video quality out of your mobile phone. There's no form of stabilization at the highest setting, but at least there is stabilization up to 1080p at 60 frames. The ultrawide has the best stabilization as usual, but it's a bit jumpy when doing any panning action. Overall, these cameras are a bit picky in situations. They look fine on a small screen, but but once you put them on a big screen, you'll immediately see the flaws of the camera. For the rest of the package, the POCO M5S is basically a small Redmi Note 10 Pro. It still has a headphone jack, it still has stereo speakers, albeit on the tinny side and not that really loud, and the all-ever reliable side fingerprint scanner. The rounded design might put some of you off since it's not really riding the trend, but the rounded frame and edges still have their own advantages like more seamless feel in the hand and thinner in feel if you want that premium-like feeling in your hand and it's still IP53 rated, so that's another good thing from older Xiaomi devices. So that's basically my experience with the M5S after using it for a couple of weeks. Do I feel like the phone is usable in 2022? Yes. But do I feel like I'm missing some things? Yes. Basically, you're buying a one-year-old phone when you buy the M5S. So even if Poco calls this one a fun magician, the magic effect doesn't last that long. So for the M3S, assuming it launches at the same price as the Redmi Note 10S from last year, it's going to be a tough sell, but if it launches at a lower price, it might have a decent shot out there. That's it, the a sub or like if you feel like supporting the channel, and as always, until the next one, stay safe.